Welcome to Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. In our last episode, we featured shiny bare metal factory fresh airplanes like the F-100 that you see here. And um, in this photo, we were talking about the cruciform fins on the auxiliary fuel tanks that stabilized the tanks when they were jettisoned from the airplane like this. However, we had an official inter-office memo to the entire staff on January 1st that said, effective this date, delete the model box art from all future videos, signed me. Well, there was such an uproar, I, I couldn't believe it. Here's our office. This is the uh, nerve center of Celebrating Aviation. This is my team. And we're located uh, high atop a skyscraper in beautiful downtown Los Angeles. And poor Sue and Judy and Betty were besieged with phone calls. We even got Western Union telegrams. People were irate that we left out the model box art. So first thing I did, I rejected the official inter-office memo. And uh, to make up for that, we're going to present a special episode on vintage plastic model box art. Now, we have other videos on box art, and you can check on the uh, playlist on our channel, but I thought we'd do something special. Surprisingly, some very popular airplanes were all but ignored by major model manufacturers, with a few exceptions. So we're going to bring you one of a kind, the only model kit of a particular airplane made in the 1950s and early 1960s, and you will not believe how many there were. Before we dive into our subject, I want to just uh, issue a friendly reminder. If you haven't done so already, please sign up on our VIP mailing list. You're going to be the first to be notified of exclusive new uh, premier uh, programming coming in 2024. And even more important, uh, we have started a two-week online newsletter. You'll receive a special aviation story and a never-before-seen photo every two weeks. The address is below, and in the uh, there's a link in the title block as well. So, let's dive in. Ravel's first World War II fighter plane model kit. You want to take a guess? All right, multiple, multiple choice. A, P-51 Mustang. B, P-47 Thunderbolt. C, was it the P-38 Lightning? Or D, none of the above? The answer, none of the above. Believe it or not, Ravel's first World War II fighter, issued in 1955, was the Bell P-39 Era Cobra. I know. The first ever Boeing B-52 Stratofortress model, issued in 1954, also Ravel. And this brings up an interesting point. In my opinion, the reason Ravel was king of the hill for all the model manufacturers in America at this, in this time was the fact they had so many unique, one-of-a-kind models. Uh, too many to mention here, but I'll just give you a quick recap. Uh, look at just the Navy airplanes. Again, no other companies issued models of these airplanes until much later, 70s, 80s, and 90s. But in uh, that early uh, golden age, this was it. Look at the Air Force airplanes, Russian airplanes, just astounding. Let's look at some other uh, model manufacturers. Here's the beautiful Grumman Albatross and the Douglas B-66 Destroyer, and the Convair XF-92A, America's first Delta Wing airplane. It was Monogram who built the only uh, beautiful kit of the Albatross. Really fabulous kit. $1.49 looked just like the airplane. Fabulous. Uh, the B-66, also quite accurate. And then Hawk uh, brought us the only Convair XF-92A, very significant airplane. They also had uh, Republic Thunderstreak, uh, the F-84F, and yes, I know Ravel had an F-84F as well, but look at this uh, box art by Kashadi, and uh, look at the airplane. So I give my vote to Hawk as the only accurate F-84F kit that was uh, produced at that time. Uh, let's take a look at some airliners. The beautiful Capital Viscount uh, was issued by Hawk, and I want to just take a quick uh, moment to... Uh, highlight the direction sheet. Hawk artwork on these direction sheets was second to none. It was just fantastic. Uh, John Zawiski was the artist. Beautiful tech art line work um, and very educational. You know, if you need to know what a de-icing system heat exchanger air intake is, it's there on the drawing. 
Uh, even the assembly instructions were unique to Hawk Kits. And again, I just want to uh, give you a quick look at uh, some really beautiful tech art. But here's the cover of the Capital uh, Viscount. Again, the only one that it, uh, existing at the time. I know there were European kits. Again, I have to clarify, this is uh, U.S. built kits, uh, U.S. manufactured kits, Hawk, uh, Delta, Convoy 880. I know what you're saying. Mike, come on, Aurora had a Delta 880 as well. Yes, that's true. But if you were one of the unlucky kids, model builders, who had saved up all your lawnmower and newspaper route money and your allowance for how many weeks to buy this Mongo model of the 880 from Aurora for $2.49. When you got this thing home, the cover was a nice photo, but the model didn't look anything like the airplane. And think about it. The Hawk kits were 98 cents and they were dead on accurate. So my vote goes to the Hawk kits as the only real models of the Viscount and Delta 880. Speaking of airliners, there was this uh, very significant machine, the revolutionary Boeing 367-80 prototype jet transport. Now look at the box in the lower right. It says Boeing 707 and Strato tanker. And the model or this airplane was neither a 707 airliner or a KC-135 Strato tanker. It was the airplane that was rolled over the Gold Cup uh, speedboat races at the Seattle Sea Fair in August of 1955 by famed Boeing test pilot Tex Johnston. If you were a fan of Sky King, you could build his airplane, a Comet Cessna 310. This was one of a series of airplanes, uh, light uh, general aviation airplanes produced by Comet. They had the uh, Piper Apache uh, Aero Commander. Uh, but uh, again, for Sky King uh, buffs, there's Sky and Penny and Clipper. Uh, the 310 was a really nice little kit. Uh, speaking of general aviation, how about the Republic CB? The only kit ever produced, really, uh, was the Lindbergh uh, kit, reissued as a Glencoe model many years later. Let's take a peek inside the box. What an elegant model. And this is a time capsule. What you're seeing here is uh, an untouched model. This was never uh, sold or messed with. That is what the, the box looked like. Uh, when the model was issued in, I believe, 1953. And uh, when you'd open that box, 1953 Air would come out of the cardboard. Uh, speaking of Republic, the uh, only model of the XF-91 Thunderceptor, the only American model of the Avro Vulcan, Lindbergh. And let's talk about some uh, famous pilots. This is uh, Wiley Post, the first round-the-world solo flight in 1933, he made the trip in seven days in the Winnie Mae, and Lindbergh had uh, the only model of the Winnie Mae at that time. Speaking of pilots, Chuck Yeager flew the X-1A and X-1B, um, and he became the first man to fly faster than twice the speed of sound. Scott Crossfield flew at twice the speed of sound. But Strombecker came out with an X-1B, and this is the airplane that's in the Air Force Museum. Um, and you get a bust of Chuck Yeager as well. But uh, how about a model of this airplane? The Temco TT-1 Pinto. And again, Strombecker to the rescue, a beautiful uh, model. And uh, you could actually uh, cut out the box art and frame it up on your wall if you wanted to do that. Kind of novel. Uh, that kit was, uh, the molds were bought and reissued by Aurora. And in my opinion, Aurora comes in as a close second to Ravel in the most number of unique airplane kits. Let's take a look. You have the Canadian Avro CF-105, magnificent, beautiful airplane, and its older brother, the CF-100, all-weather interceptor. The only model of the North American F-107 and the Russian Tu-104 jet airliner, the first twin jet airliner to go into service in uh, 1956. How about a Russian MiG-19 in beautiful glowing neon green plastic? And uh, one of my top 10 favorite box art images by the great uh, Jack Lenwood, the Phantom F-110 Spectre. North American B-70. Look at this scene. Guys running to launch the bomber in the Arctic. 
and the Ryan X13 VertiJet. Now, this is an amazing story. And um, this was, in my opinion, one of the best Aurora kits ever produced. It looked so much like the airplane, the trailer, uh, went up, you know, was erected and, and uh, just looked like the real thing. Beautiful, beautiful model molded in uh, two different colors. But look at this. This is a prototype test buildup of a kit, 132nd scale, fully operating controls, detachable detailed engine, huge model, fully operating, and it was to be released by Ravel. And what happened with this is quite a story. We're going to bring it to you in a future episode. I should mention that uh, in designing box art, the great Jack Lenwood told me once that uh, in many cases, it wasn't the top of the box that they would look at. It was the end. Special thanks to the wonderful people who helped make these uh, presentations possible. And a shout out to my hobby shop, Hobby Rama in Rockville Center, Long Island. And of course, special thanks to my dear friend, Max of Max's Models, the best modeling channel on YouTube. Again, quick reminder, sign up on our VIP mailing list, a lot of cool stuff. And thank you so much for celebrating aviation with Mike Machette. Hope you enjoyed this episode. We uh, so very much enjoy making these for you. Uh, please do subscribe. And as always, until next time, Take care.